Egypt has long been a source of fascination for archaeologists, historians, scientists, and the general public alike. It seems there's always something being uncovered in Egypt, and yet each time something's discovered there, it only seems to deepen the sense of mystery around the ancient Egyptians. There have been various discoveries made there over the years that have troubled the minds of scientists, and we've put some of the best of them together for you in this video. If you want to find a fine ancient Egyptian artifact, the best place to look is a museum. As an example, here's the funerary mask of Hotnefer, which is on display at the Met Museum in New York, USA. The distinctive mask was discovered by the museum's own Egyptian expedition team in 1936 inside a rock-cut tomb on a hillside close to the offering chapel of Senenmut in Thebes. Rather than being a pharaoh or a queen, Hatnefer was the mother of Senemut. History records that she was in her 70s by the time she passed away. Senemut was not yet the king, but he was a rich official who had the resources to provide a rich burial for his mother, including a gilded mummy mask, a heart scarab, and a canopic box. The remains of her husband, Ramos, were exhumed and then reburied with her at the time of her entombment. The mask is made from cartonnage, which is similar to paper mache but it's been overlaid with gesso and linen, and then topped with gold foil to make it look more ostentatious. As a finishing touch, the eyes are made of Egyptian alabaster and obsidian. The artifact is more than 2,450 years old. Howard Carter's team obtained many fine items from the tomb of Tutankhamun when they opened it in 1922, including King Tut's death mask which makes the one we just looked at look like an amateur effort. Some of those artifacts are more famous than others, though, and one of them you might not have heard about before is the Lotus Chalice, which is also sometimes known as the Wishing Cup. Experts believe that it was created during the king's reign, or that it may have been made specifically to be buried with him, in which case it was made somewhere between 1332 and 1323 BCE. Impressively, the entire chalice is carved from a single piece of alabaster. Several inscriptions are engraved into its surface, including a dedication to the memory of Tutankhamun, which reads, May you live, may you spend millions of years, you who love Thebes, sitting with your face to the north wind, with your eyes beholding happiness. The same inscription was carved into the gravestone of Howard Carter himself when he passed away. The one-of-a-kind chalice is now on display inside the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. You'd need a degree in Egyptian history before you could even begin to contemplate the full extent of the mysteries of the Temple of Kam Ambo. Even that probably wouldn't be enough. However, the mummified remains of several hundred crocodiles were recently found underneath the temple, thus finally explaining some of the markings on the walls. Unusually for Ptolemaic period Egypt, the temple is divided into two. We have two halls, two courts, two sanctuaries, and even two entrances. Half of the temple is devoted to worshipping Sobek, the other half to Horus. The Sobek half of the temple is covered in crocodile paintings, but nobody could ever work out why. The paintings earned the temple the nickname House of the Crocodiles, but until the crocodile remains were found, most historians just thought of the artwork as quirky and unexplained. What remains unexplained are the engravings of medical and surgical implements on the temple walls, which are said to be the oldest in the world. Were there two separate priesthoods here? Was one devoted to medicine and the other to crocodiles? If so, what did they have in common? There is so much to excavate and uncover at the site of Saqqara, the largest ancient necropolis in Egypt, that work at the site will probably still be ongoing long after we and everybody watching this video have passed away. Astounding discoveries are made there almost every week, including the 3,200-year-old sarcophagus of a high-ranking royal secretary, which was discovered in September 2022. The sarcophagus, which is known for its unusual red-pink shade, belongs to a man named Ta M. Uya, who served under Ramses II and would have worked closely with the pharaoh. 
His full title was Royal Secretary, Chief Overseer of Cattle, Head of the Treasury of the Ramesseum, which was Ramses' funerary temple in another necropolis at Luxor. On top of that, Ta Emuya was also responsible for divine offerings to all the various gods of Upper and Lower Egypt. In other words, he would have been a very busy man. Perhaps he died of exhaustion. The lid of the sarcophagus has been broken at some point in the very distant past, but it's impossible to know whether anything was stolen at the time it was broken. The Seated Scribe, sometimes referred to as the Squatting Scribe, is one of the most remarkable pieces of ancient Egyptian art ever discovered. The strikingly lifelike sculpture is another discovery from Saqqara, but was found there in the Avenue of Sphinxes that leads to the Serapium of Saqqara in 1850. Egyptologists have been able to date the piece to the time of either the 5th or 4th dynasties of the Old Kingdom, making it somewhere between 4400 and 4600 years old. As is implied by the name, the delicately painted limestone statue depicts a seated scribe at work. The eyes of the statue are the most lifelike aspect of it and are made from rock crystal and magnesite. In a curious detail, the nipples of the statue are made from wood. We don't know whether the person depicted in the sculpture is real or imagined, but the semicircular base of the piece implies that it was once fitted to a larger piece of rock, which may have included a name, a title, or both. The thin lips and broad chest of the sculpture have drawn comparisons to Pehernefer, a high official who was alive at around the right time and is recorded in other works of art. But the resemblance isn't so striking that we can be sure it's him. It's becoming increasingly common knowledge that there are secret chambers hidden in the Great Pyramid of Giza. In September 2020, explorers identified two secret doors hidden inside the pyramid. They're at the end of a pair of narrow tunnels that extend from the north and south walls of the Queen's Chamber inside the pyramid, and then stop at stone blocks before they reach the outer walls. There isn't enough space in the tunnels for a human to explore them, but a robot called Webwawat was sent into the space and obtained pictures of a small stone door with what appear to be two copper handles attached to it. The same robot took pictures of faint red hieroglyphs painted onto the walls. The hieroglyphs are rough, almost like graffiti, so it's possible that they're guide marks left behind by the stonemasons who built the pyramids. It's also possible that they're heretic numeric signs recording the length of each shaft. These shafts can have been used for ventilation because they don't open up to the exterior of the pyramid, but they're surely too small for humans to have been expected to navigate them. Building a door implies that there's something worth protecting behind it, though. What could it be? The Steel of Ankh FN Kansu is an artifact that's quite a mouthful, which might be why it's known as the Steel of Revealing. Unusually, for an ancient Egyptian steel, it's made of wood rather than stone. The artifact was discovered by Francis Augusta Ferdinand Mariette within the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut in Dair al-Bari in 1858. The archaeologists correctly identified it as an offering steel, originally created for a Montu priest by the name of Ankh Fn Kansu. Historians agree that it was created somewhere between the years 680 and 670 BCE. The steel might not look like it's made from wood, but that's because it's been entirely covered with a plaster gesso, then painted. The priest Ankh F. N. Kansu himself appears on the front of the artifact, depicted presenting offerings to Re Harakti, the falcon-headed god. A depiction of the sky goddess Nut can be seen directly above him. Excerpts from chapters 2, 30, and 91 of the Book of the Dead are inscribed across the steel for unknown reasons. Also unknown is the reason that the object ended up in the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut. You have to go a long way to find the Dabu giraffes. They're miles from anywhere in the country of Niger, in part of the Sahara Desert known as the Tenera Desert. The land here is so barren that even its name translates to the place where there is nothing. There are no animals, no insects, no water, and no life. 
but there is a collection of 800 petroglyphs, among which the stars of the show are two gigantic carvings of giraffes. They were first identified by an explorer named Christian Dupi in 1987, but they were carved somewhere between 6 and 8,000 years ago on sandstone rock. This part of the world was once under Egyptian control, but the giraffes predate Egypt itself. The arid conditions in the desert have preserved them for all this time. The size of the carvings is remarkable. One of them, believed to be a male giraffe, is 18 feet tall. That makes it the largest petroglyph in the world and also the world's largest animal rock carving. The real puzzle of the carvings is that each of the figures is accompanied by a depiction of a human seemingly holding the giraffes on long leads. Could this mean that thousands of years ago the human race managed to domesticate giraffes? If so, why did we ever let them go? We've talked about the Great Pyramid of Giza in this video, but it's far from the only noteworthy pyramid in Egypt. Here's an Egyptian pyramid you probably haven't heard much about before, even though it's older than all the rest. It's the Great Pyramid of Djoser, and it's the oldest large stone monument in the world. We believe it was built more than four and a half thousand years ago and was made to entomb the remains of the great pharaoh Djoser. The 200-foot-tall pyramid is made of over 11 million square feet of clay and stone, and the design work is generally credited to the legendary Egyptian polymath Imhotep. Nobody's ever built anything like this before, and had it not been built, the Egyptians would probably have never gone on to build the Great Pyramid of Giza. Once upon a time, it was surrounded by a larger walled complex containing temples and a courtyard. Secrecy was clearly important to Imhotep. There are no less than 13 fake doors to the pyramid's interior located around the perimeter. We may never know what truly lies inside. The Egyptian government doesn't allow anybody to enter. We've talked about one of the most striking discoveries made inside Tutankhamun's tomb, but one of the more curious objects Howard Carter discovered in the tomb was a tiny scarab brooch. It's a beautiful decorative object, but it would be considered a minor detail if it weren't for the material that it's made from. The yellow scarab contains a yellowy-brown silica glass stone taken from the sand of the Sahara and then polished by a skilled craftsperson. The glass is about 28 million years old and was created when a comet hit the desert with such force that the sand was heated to a temperature of around 2,000 degrees Celsius thus forming glass. Fragments of this ancient glass can still be found scattered across 6,000 square miles of the Sahara Desert today. The Egyptians were years ahead of their time when it came to astronomy, so is it possible that they were aware of the extraterrestrial influences that resulted in the creation of this glass? That might be a stretch, but it seems they knew there was something special about it. If they didn't, it wouldn't have become the centerpiece of jewelry made for a king. One of the most astonishing discoveries to happen in Egypt in recent years is that of the discovery of a whole palace belonging to Ramses the Great, believed by some to be the greatest pharaoh of them all. He ruled during the New Kingdom era, more than 3,000 years ago. The discovery was made by American archaeologists in Abydos in 2019. The team was working at the site of a funerary temple when they uncovered a stone walkway leading to a previously undetected door. Upon opening the door, they found themselves in an enormous grand structure fit for a king. It was only when they found the cartouche of Ramses II that they understood which king it was built for. The stone door had taken the archaeologists to a lobby, which eventually led to a large hall made of limestone, bricks, and tiles with columns inscriptions of Ramses II, and a series of royal symbols etched into the walls. There are some signs that the construction of the palace began during the rule of Seti I, father and predecessor of Ramses the Great, with the son finishing his father's work. The Sakura bird really shouldn't be such a big mystery. After all, it's just a tiny ancient Egypt hand carving. What could be so mysterious about that? The answer is that its proportions are perfectly engineered to be capable of flight. If you threw this 2,200-year-old artifact off the top of a mountain, it'd glide perfectly, 
with the same aerodynamic efficiency as any glider we'd be capable of making today. Although the artifact has a bird's head, the rest of it looks more like a plane than anything avian. The wings are featherless, flat, thin, and tapered. The tail is square. During the 1970s, a curious group of students scaled up the Saqqara bird to make a plane-sized replica and demonstrated that it could both fly and glide without any tailoring required. If this had been made in the past decade, we wouldn't hesitate to call it a model aircraft. But the ancient Egyptians had no aircraft to use as reference guides when making models. Might this have been a flying child's toy of some kind? Or did the person who made this understand the basic principles of flight, even if they couldn't make a powered flying machine? Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.